Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclone Source and this morning a good news update for your Sunday, the 10th of March 2024. We no longer have a significant tropical cyclone threat for the Coral Sea. So all of that plus more upcoming in today's weather update. If you haven't already, then please do consider subscribing and also leave a like on the video while you're at it and join the channel by clicking the join button down below. The recent support on the channel has been heartwarming. We're taking a look in far northern Queensland right now. There's a lot of thunderstorm activity firing up around the Cairns, Lockhart River, Cooktown sort of area. Um, and that is creating some pretty significant rainfall totals towards the north of Cairns. And they're going to continue throughout the rest of today. As I have been saying for the last couple of days, come Sunday, the rainfall that's been happening between Cairns and Innisfail, Tully, down towards Lucinda and Townsville, that's going to start to shift further north as the monsoon trough really does intensify. But there's a big new factor in today's forecast. All three forecast models in... Um, coincidentally dropped the tropical cyclone chances for the Coral Sea basically completely. I did say that they'd continue to shift the tropical low towards the east and they have done that. It's now expected to form over Vanuatu, but it's no longer a threat too far northern Queensland. However, that doesn't mean that the risk has gone. The risk actually remains the same because we weren't expecting a strong tropical cyclone at all. We're still expecting a tropical low to bring significant rainfall totals uh, north of Townsville in around five to ten days time. So the risk still remains and I will get to that that in just a little bit. We're now looking at areas around the northern parts of Western Australia and also over the um West Australian waters where Tropical Low 08U was. That was a bit of a uh, whip around the world we just had there from Windy. Um, but yeah, you can see that we are expecting these systems to start to fire across the West Australian areas now. And this will be the first cyclone for West Australia this cyclone season outside of summer. This is crazy stuff. We have seen really poor activity nationwide actually uh, for cyclones this tropical cyclone season. The cyclone season has been dismal in terms of numbers, but it's certainly been, um, it's kept us on our toes in terms of the activity activity. Um, but yeah, the Queensland system that we have been forecasting is no longer on the cards, but that doesn't mean that the threat has gone. Rainfall still remains. And we'll talk about that uh, in a lot of detail in the next couple of minutes. So as I did say, the rainfall is contracting further north. It's now around the Cooktown and further up towards Lockhart River sort of area. And this is a sort of rainfall that's going to stick around for days. We'll switch between the Axis G3 model and the Eastern Relief model. They're very similar in terms of what they're forecasting right now. The Axis G3 model still wants a tropical cyclone in the Coral Sea and still a strong one but it's certainly not a reliable forecast model to be using for cyclone activity, but it is very good for rainfall, and that's what I'm using uh, right now. So you can see thunderstorm and shower activity expected to be quite consistent in the northern extremities of the Cape York Peninsula uh, for the next 36 hours or so, and also some strong thunderstorm activity across the Northern Territory, extending into Darwin, Catherine, and then up and towards Kakadu and other areas of Arnhem Land through Monday and Tuesday, keeping track of time on the bottom part of your screen as always. And then we're gonna start to see this tropical low start to develop just in the Bonaparte Gulf by Wednesday morning. Now this will likely become the next tropical cyclone in the Australian region or maybe the um, 08U might get to it just before it does. I mean 08U has been talked up quite a lot by the Axis G3 model but it's going to be neck and neck in terms of what cyclone forms first and on this forecast model it might actually be, we're using the ECMF right now, it might actually be 08U that gets named but it's going to, they're both going to be very weak systems, category 1, category 2 tops. Uh, 08U does skim the West Australian coastline, and then 09U, which is up here, looks like it moves into the um, Gulf of Carpentera, and this is what's going to be bringing our heavy rainfall. So I guess the cyclone threat for Queensland hasn't gone. That was a bit of a misleading header into this video, but you can still see the tropical low in the Gulf of Carpentera, and that's spitting out all of this rainfall for the Cape York Peninsula. And I find it really entertaining how it, the Cape York Peninsula, if you extend the coastline of the Northern Territory in Queensland on the Gulf of Carpentaria down towards Townsville here, the rainfall never extends further south than that. The Cape York Peninsula really is its own climate. And I find that very entertaining and very useful to be making in these forecasts. So if I say Cape York Peninsula, I mean the Cape York Peninsula. I don't mean uh, the Northern Tablelands or so forth. I do believe the Northern Tablelands though are actually in the Cape York Peninsula. So, uh, contradicting myself right there. But between Burktown and Townsville and further north, that's the Cape York Peninsula. I'm sure everyone can agree with me on that one. So the Eastern Rift still has this system spinning up in the Gulf of Carpentaria. It just doesn't have the tropical low that we're talking about in the Coral Sea. It spun it right over towards Vanuatu. And that's the same as the Access G3 model, uh, but the Access has it about five days earlier by the looks of things. The GFS still not on board with any system. They're calling for that weak tropical low through here, but it's going to be the Gulf of Carpentaria once again that does receive that tropical 
cyclone impact. And it looks like it might be quite strong as per the GFS forecast. So probably looking at a category two strength tropical cyclone here on top of what could be a category two or category three strength tropical cyclone in the West Australian water. So we will have simultaneous tropical lows and maybe simultaneous tropical cyclones uh, from Thursday, maybe in towards Saturday or Sunday. And I'm really glad that the forecast is now becoming a lot more uh, certain with this. I can say with a very high degree of confidence that this is what's actually going to end up happening because the congruency between the forecast models, it, it's looking really healthy right now. The Axis, the Eastern Blue and the GFS all expecting a very similar scenario to happen even out towards Saturday and Sunday, typically when the forecasts start to become more and more unreliable. We should take a look at the rainfall forecast now for Arnhem Land, the Northern Territory, and also for the Cape York Peninsula now because rainfall is certainly going to be the most significant threat out of this. If I'm to call a maximum intensity on this system, it's category two. It's not getting any Stronger than category two and in fact I doubt that it will get to cyclone status just with how things have played out this season but we'll have to wait another couple of days in the forecast to really see what's going on. Rainfall will be and it always is with these systems the main threat um, from the tropical cyclone so over the next 12 to 24 hours and we'll look at for the next 24 hours there's going to be quite a lot of rainfall around the Cairns area and up towards Cooktown and the Daintree in fact we're looking at up to 80 millimeters further today um, there from those heavy showers those heavy and consistent showers I noticed in the comment sections uh, yesterday that Innisfail and Tully got blasted for rainfall and that's going to be the sort of rainfall that's going to start to shift further north. The West Australia as well, it's certainly the standout right now, very, very wet indeed. It's going to be a great season uh, for wildflowers if this is the rainfall that we're going to start things off with. So that's some exciting stuff there, but I mean, very small population, so not much to worry about there. Just some major uh, trucking and railway routes that are at risk of being flooded out, which is pretty significant. The Northern Territory as well over the next three days, widespread totals up towards 100 millimetres. In fact, as you go to the next five days, it's going to be widespread totals above 200 millimetres. So as we get into, I believe, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, it's going to get very wet around the Darwin area. We could be seeing 100 millimetres a day for Darwin and surrounds from these thunderstorms and showers associated with the developing tropical low 09U, which could become the next tropical cyclone um, there. And that will likely just drive rainfall accumulation up through the roof. And it's a very similar forecast between the Eastern Blue F and the Axis G3 model for the next five days, which gives me a very high degree of uh, confidence in saying that this is going to be what actually plays out. Widespread totals, two to 300 millimetres, one or two spots up to 400 millimetres. Over the Cape York Peninsula, it's nothing too extreme, uh, 50 to 100 millimetres for the Cassowary Coast. And then as you get up towards the Daintree Rainforest, maybe up towards 100 to 150 millimetres in one or two locations. And further up into the Cape York Peninsula, as you get up towards Weep, uh, Lockhart River and then towards Thursday Island, rainfall accumulations do significantly increase. Now it's going to be between days 5 and 10 that the rainfall totals go berserk once again. We could be seeing 400 millimetres fall between Thursday and Monday. Um, from this developing tropical low on the Gulf of Carpentaria. And we could be, uh, that would be for um, Innisfail and Tully, uh, mind you. A lot of rainfall could be falling down there. And that's also reciprocated between both major forecast models, the Eastern Rift and the Axis G3. They're calling for a lot of rainfall around the Cairns, Tully, and then up towards Port Douglas sort of area. So in short, just expect a further 500 millimeters for the remainder of the next 10, to, uh, 10 days to fortnight, because there's uh, going to be a lot of moisture in the air and it's going to be driven ashore. And we're just going to see more and more rainfall fall and it's going to be in a very similar vein to what the last three or four days have looked like but it is a relief to that sizzling hot air that they've got that they have had up there for the first part of March and also for the uh, for a lot of February they were in for some very hot days as well with some very high in heat indexes so that should be a little bit of relief to the hot weather they've, they've been seeing uh, up around the can sort of area um, and then yeah widespread totals 150 to 250 millimeters over the Cape York Peninsula one or two spots might approach 400 millimeters especially closer to the um, Northern Territory Queensland border and also closer to the coastline on the western side, the west coast of the Cape York Peninsula. And then a lot of rainfall expected um, up in the Arafura Sea as well and then into the northern extremities of the Northern Territory. Up to 400 millimetres looks very widespread there. Uh, but yeah, three to 400 millimetres from areas around Melville Island, Darwin, and then up towards the more remote indigenous communities in the Northern Territory. A lot of rainfall can be expected there as well. Now that basically does it in terms of a comprehensive forecast for Queensland and the Northern Territory. We could actually go a little bit further south. Rainfall will actually extend down to Townsville. Townsville will likely miss out because of the Townsville rainbow 
firm effect yet. It looks like they do, only about 50 to 80 millimetres over the next 10 days. But it looks like the Queensland coast will be copying speckly showers at least next week, which will likely um, cause about 100 millimetres to fall. And the first really good rainfall around Rockhampton down towards Bundaberg, there will be places that pick up up to 100 millimetres in the 5 to 10 day forecast period down there. Or maybe it's in the 3 to uh, ten, a 5 day forecast period. But it looks like we're going to get an onshore flow happen around Wednesday and Thursday and areas around Mackay, Rockhampton and maybe even down towards Bundaberg if they're really lucky on Wednesday might receive up to 50 millimetres on the coastline from some heavy showers which could also bring some damaging winds as well so that's looking quite good indeed. Now, just real quick, we're going to take a look at the tropical cyclone threat for West Australia and surrounds. Now, don't be fooled if you're a Queensland viewer, where these systems track is actually quite important to uh, the cyclone and tropical low forecast for Queensland, very much so for the monsoon. But you can just see they're going to be weak systems with not too much influence. Both of them will be, or at least 08 you will be as it moves close to the West Australian coastline. Could actually get to severe tropical cyclone status. And it looks like it's going to try and... No, oh no, it actually stalls in previous forecast we've had it race down towards the Perth sort of area where it might dump a little bit of rainfall there um, but yeah the Gulf of Carpentaria system is certainly going to be the one um, that's definitely going to have all eyes on it. Now in terms of wind speeds it doesn't look like a dangerous system we're probably looking out for wind speeds of around 60 to 70 kilometers an hour maybe up towards 80 kilometers an hour as it approaches peak intensity in the Gulf of Carpentaria wind gusts a little bit higher up towards 110 maybe 125 kilometers an hour so you're probably talking about destructive winds around the core here um, and yeah this would be approaching category 2 status but again not really much to worry about. Um, in terms of wind speeds category 1 and category 2 especially the lower end of category two for cyclone prone regions they're not really a concern are these tropical cyclones it's just really a bunch of gusty thunderstorms when you get up towards high end category two that's when you can see some widespread significant damage start to unfold um, trees generally break at category two status and power lines can fail as well but yeah category three is the real deal but we're not really expecting that here it's definitely going to be the rainfall threat and once again as well because of a, a thing called the model resolution which is how much data the models can crunch on a square kilometer basis um, in terms of the ECMWF model you're talking about how much data it can crunch on a nine square kilometer basis. Um, the rainfall accumulation, it really isn't an accurate picture, especially when you get into the more mountainous areas outside of Cairns, Atherton, and then down towards Innisfail and Tully as well. Um, these mountains here, and the valleys inside them, they can pick up twice, even three or four times as much rainfall as what the forecast models do suggest. And we saw that with Cyclone Jasper, that was a classic system that was um, Woodgill Woodgill, just outside of Woodgill Woodgill, I believe there was 1300 millimeters on the forecast, still a hell of a lot of rainfall but they ended up getting something like 2300 millimeters so model resolution does actually play a pretty important part and if you do live in an area that's typically and very consistently wetter than the Bureau of Meteorology's forecast um, then you're likely in an area that the models cannot accurately predict because it's surrounded by hills and mountains and so forth first of all beautiful place to live that is the dream uh, really for quite a lot of people myself included to be surrounded by mountains up around the can sort of area but it's also another thing that you can get flooded in because you're not expecting the amount of rainfall that might actually fall so um, if you do consistently, if you've got a rain gauge and it consistently receives twice as much rainfall as what the Bureau of Meteorology forecasts, then you're probably in one of those sort of grey zones where the models can't accurately predict what rainfall is coming down and typically just multiply the rainfall forecast by two and that's what you've got. Um, we will just take a look at the radar because it's a very different look at the radar from what we have been seeing over the last couple of days. It's this moderate to heavy rainfall, but it's very consistent and very widespread around Cooktown and further north of Cooktown. Um, in fact, yeah, it is very heavy indeed. We're talking about rainfall accumulations of around 15 to 30 millimetres an hour here in one or two of these spots. Very, very wet indeed. Um, but yeah, that's contradictory to the rainfall that they have been seeing around here. This is the sort of rainfall that's been dumping these significant rain accumulations over the past couple of days these very small speckly showers that don't look like much on radar but they're very slow moving and they come in and they just sit on a location for an hour or two and dump 
50, 80, 100, 120 millimeters over two or three hours. Um, and it can cause this flooding, especially in what's already a very saturated part of Australia. Anyways, really starting to waffle here. I could talk about the weather all day, honestly. Yeah, let's just face it. Thank you so much to the channel sponsors. Their name's on screen right now. It's just one away from the magic number of 10. Thank you so much for the recent support on the channel, though. It's, it's genuinely heartwarming to see. Um, so many nice comments. I'm reading them all. I'm trying to respond to as many as I can, uh, but it's quite overwhelming when you getting about 200 comments a day. Um, my little rant about the YouTube algorithm. So yesterday, um, or no, the day before's video, I think what it would have been Friday, the Friday upload, that got pushed into the algorithm as opposed to the update that I did yesterday. So a lot of you guys missed out on seeing yesterday's update and were recommended the Friday update instead, which means you got day old information. And that's why the video was actually quite unreliable and misleading, which is why I've really honed in on the specifics and the details in this video. So if you are watching and you've just watched the Friday update. I do apologize. I need to specifically state what dates these videos are made in, uh, in the description and also in the, um, uh, opening segments of the video because that would have been quite misleading to a few people uh, because the forecast on Friday is vastly different to what it was yesterday and vastly different once again to what it was today and I do genuinely thank all of you guys for watching. Anyways, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.